Howdy folks, I'm Hank Sheffer, and welcome to another true life story right here with Larry Hedrick on Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today we're on location at Superior, Arizona at the base of the cliffs of the Legend of Apache Leap. The Legend of Apache Leap, better known as the Legend of the Apache Tears. There's two versions to this story. One of them is the one that tourists are given when they buy a piece of jewelry made out of Apache tears. And then there's the longer version. The short version runs something like uh, the US, U.S. Army trapped a, a band of Apaches on top of a mountain. And rather than surrender, they leaped to their deaths. And the, the widows and wives of the lost uh, their tears were absorbed by the obsidian of the Apache tears. That's the short version that everybody gets. And when these people that buy jewelry go back to their home country and somebody says, what's that? They get the legend just exactly that way. And it's well known all over the world. The long version has a lot more information in it. It, um, it mentions General Stoneman. It mentions Camp Pinnell, or Picket Post, which those camps were, the names were used interchangeably. And um, it suggests that the fight actually started at the base of the mountain, and the Apaches knew a way to get to the top. Well, Stoneman, General Stoneman, when he established Camp Pinnell at Picket Post, about five miles west of Superior, uh, he immediately started to work on what is called today as Stoneman's Grade. He needed to build a road from Camp Pinnell up to what we call the top of the world today. It's the highest elevation from where you come from Superior till you drop off down into Globe. And the reason for the establishing of uh, Stoneman's Grade was the, for the mobility of troops to respond to Indian uprisings that, uh, that may occur and to avoid the use of Devil's Canyon. Uh, Devil's Canyon is an absolutely wonderful, marvelous, beautiful place, and it, but it, it floods. The Queen Creek runs right down through uh, Devil's Canyon, and it does a lot of flooding, and therefore, just exactly when you need a path, they can't use it. Plus the fact that in order to build in Devil's Canyon, you need modern equipment. Their soldiers could not move. It's totally boulder strewn and it's just impossible to build a road in Devil's Canyon. Devil's Canyon is also at the north end of the very mountain that Apache Leap that took place in. So the long version of the story also mentions that there were 75 Indians involved in this, this affair. In 2013, there was an archeologist that gave it a lecture at the Tempe uh, Historical Society. And he, dis he displayed brass cartridges that he found at the site on top of the leap. Um, I couldn't find any information about the caliber of the, of the, um, of the shells because he also mentioned the date of 1877 and that the, the shells that he found, the brass cartridges, did not match the date of 1871 formally mentioned. I, you know, during the Battle of Skull Cave, the primary weapon of the U.S. soldiers was uh, Sharps rifles that had been converted from paper cartridges to brass cartridges, and they had a smattering of Remington rolling blocks. The Sharps were the 50-70 caliber, and the ro rolling blocks had a number of different calibers, 43, 44, but they also had 50-70. And I would assume the Army would stick with the same kind of a cartridge so they didn't have to stock all different kinds of, of ammunition. But if that particular brass that he displayed was 45-70, that meant that they were working with the trapdoor rifle which didn't come out until 1873. And by the time it was issued to soldiers in the West, uh, it would have been about 1875 or, or later. And if, if, that would, if it was 4570 brass that he found, that would establish the date pretty well. But it really doesn't matter. The finding of military brass on the hill, which this man explained, 
he found brass right up at the very edge of the cliff, and some of the brass was down at the bottom of the cliff, which indicated that the soldiers were firing down the cliff. And they certainly weren't shooting dead people. If the Apaches had found a way up the cliff, he assumed that they were escaping, and that's why the soldiers were firing at him from the cliff. And his conclusion was that the leap didn't really occur. It was, it was firing at, es at, at escaping Indians was the, the true s situation. Well, you know, in conclusion to this legend, nobody said Indians were stupid. It looks like some of them got away, but somebody made an awful lot of money selling Apache tears. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. 